Hi all, I'm Chris Capel and welcome to the Game Watcher video preview for Techland's brand new first person open world co-op zombie hunting experience, Dying Light. For those of you keeping count, uh, well done you. This is actually my second hands-on with Dying Light, however that first time was just a short playthrough where I was guided by the game's level designer, whereas this time I now have full access to the entire beginning of Dying Light and I thoroughly explored the opening city slums. While I did feel that it was more than a little like Dead Island, it was different enough for me to really get into it. I completed Dead Island but barely touched Riptide because I was so tired of the gameplay, but Dying Light brought back my attention. Getting to a bit of the story, you play a man named Carl Crane, a government agent on some mysterious mission that was only teased during my few hours of the game. After literally dropping into the city, you're beset by both bandits and the undead as due to some unknown reason the zombie apocalypse has of course happened and you're right back in the thick of the quarantine zone. After being rescued by a group of survivors holed up in an apartment building, there are introductions, a short tutorial, a lot of warnings and finally a request for your help. You volunteer as a runner to get out into the city and make things better as you can while still making your government overlords happy too. The main gameplay of Dying Light is, on the surface at least, very similar to Dale Island. You explore, you go on simple missions, you kill or avoid zombies who are actually pretty tough, you scavenge for all sorts of insane items that you can use to craft objects like firecrackers, which you can use to lure zombies where you want them to go, and also upgrade your character in the three skill lines of agility, power and survival. Zombies are everywhere and have various mixes of strength, speeds, ones with special clothing like armor vets and hazmat suits, and the stronger bastards like the big hulking brutes who swing giant hammers. And yes, there are bikini zombies too. There are also non-dead human enemies such as looters and bandits, and it's a lot of fun to lead them into a pack of zombies and just watch them all get torn to pieces. Combat's generally more fun than Dead Island, I have to say, with explosives and the ability to kick zombies into spike traps, but so far it does feel pretty similar. There are two big areas where it differs from the spiritual predecessor, however, and the first is the much advertised free running. This definitely has a mirror's edge feel to it. You can't climb up every surface to the top of a building, but if it looks like you can climb it or grab hold, you can. You can even shimmy up telephone poles, although sadly not palm trees. It's hard to convey in words even with the video just how satisfying and fun it is to run and jump from rooftop to rooftop, parkouring around her arm. Only an extended playthrough will tell if it becomes repetitious over time, but I personally love the few hours I spent desperately scrabbling up tin roofs to escape the zombie hordes below. That is, until night falls. While in daylight, apart from the free running, daylight light does feel most like Techland's first zombie game, as soon as darkness sets in, the other big difference from Dead Island comes into play, and the entire game changes. The zombies are no longer slow shamblers, they're quick, they're powerful, they can sense you, and they can fucking climb and jump after you. What was a free running action game suddenly becomes a tense survival horror stealth game, like Alien Isolation, only with loads of the bastards out to get you. If one catches sight of you, you better hide, spring some traps, chuck some distractions, or just run, forest, run. At the start of the game, the nighttime part is nearly impossible to get through without dying. Luckily, there's not much of a penalty on that at the moment, as I did it a lot. The map is quite sizable, and it's only the opening area of the game, so Dying Light should be pretty damn big in its final version. Hopefully the other areas will diversify themselves a bit, as I can't imagine 30 hours of free running around apocalyptic slums. There are random encounters to keep things interesting at least, like survivors in need of help or airdrops to seize, and safe zones to liberate, but of course the missions will be your main focus other than surviving. The missions are fairly interesting and brought in well, and most importantly are even amusing now and again. One particular mission I loved was getting a video and some chocolates for a strange man named Ghazi and his supposedly dead mother, so when I finally got into his apartment I was expecting a Norman Bates psycho type scenario with her corpse on the sofa, but said Ghazi had just piled a load of sandbags up and stuck a bucket with a smiley face on top for her head. How sweet. And then he told me off for bothering them while they were watching their movie. In case you can't tell, I was playing the PC version of Dying Light, and I'll forgive you the confusion since mouse and keyboard controls aren't fully implemented yet, so I have to play the game on my Xbox joypad, hence the rather n narrow, defined field of vision. And the controls definitely require a bit of getting used to. And yes, there are a few things left to do in the game before release. There are a few silly bugs, including one that forced me to restart, 
button prompts are a bit small and it's occasionally hard to work out what you're supposed to be doing. So hopefully Techland have time before the game's released next month to squash all the unfinished bits remaining. Especially since Dead Island was a bit of a nightmare for them in this regard. Nevertheless, what I really wanted to say about the PC version was that the settings were all turned up and it was utterly incredible to look at. As you can see here, while it made my PC hum something awful, the scenes on offer were sometimes breathtaking to behold. And although the zombie hordes never quite reached Dead Rising 3 levels, they could get pretty sizable, and they're also a lot tougher, remember? I was looking forward to Dying Light before, but I must admit I was concerned about whether I'd enjoy it in single player since Dead Island really did skew towards co-op and lost my interest in its sequel. Fortunately, my few hours of the game have put my concerns to rest, and I'm back to definitely buying it when it comes out. Even if I don't touch the multiplayer, which will undoubtedly be a blast, even though I admittedly didn't get to try it out this time around. If you've been left jaded by zombie games, and Dead Island Riptide in particular, I definitely recommend giving Dying Light at least a try. It might reignite that passion for zombie smashing with its big dollop of free running and a tablespoonful of night terrors. Dying Light is currently due out January 27th, 2015, all well, that could certainly slip and I'm taking bets on whether it does. And will be new gen only, so that's PC, Xbox One and PS4. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll be back to slay some undead with you in the new year.